Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. As we near the weekend, I pray the Lord can talk to us from the book of Numbers. We are at chapter 14. We want to begin at verse 1 and work our way to verse 5 and obviously draw five points for the weekend. Let us consider the King James Version and what it says. It reads as follows. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land? to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should be prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, dear Lord, the work at times becomes arduous. We second guess your presence and we think a life of sin and bondage may have been a better option. Uh, dear Father, may you give us enough not to think in this way. Do not give us too little in our lives until we begin to second guess your presence and give the leadership a headache. How we pray, dear Lord, that as we go into this weekend, you may show us mercy, grace, and love beyond measure. This has been our prayer of faith, for we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior and Redeemer. Amen and amen. My dear friends, why don't we raise just five points as usual and at point number one. Notice how the children of Israel, the Bible says, everybody wept that night. You know, there's a possibility that you may find many people complaining and they are weeping and crying over something that is not. <laughs> These people are crying over a report that they have received. Some have opined that there is no way we can win against the Canaanites and the Amalekites. There is no way we can make it into the promised land because of the hopes that have been dashed. They have been on the road all this time anticipating that everything will come to an end. Now, as they receive this kind of a dampening report, the whole congregation wept and burst into tears. But is it possible that some of us are crying over things that are not? We are crying about tomorrow. We have not even arrived in tomorrow. We are crying about the economy and what it will look like next year, what it will look like next month. We are busy crying. And majority of us are crying. We have not even arrived where the problem is, but we are already crying. As we go into this weekend, perchance you are still crying. I want to ask you this question. Do you know why you're crying? Why are you crying? Are you really, really faced with the problem that you are crying about or you are only anticipating it? Have a reason to cry when your feet are stuck in the mud. Do not be crying when you are still on solid ground. Do not be crying before the battle starts. What are you crying about? Point number two. Now, the children of Israel turned to Moses. The Bible says they complained against Moses, as if that is not enough. They complained against Aaron. These two brothers received the complaints of the children of Israel. They are singled out as the ones who have caused this nemesis they are singled out as the ones who have let them down this precipice on a dead end road. If you are in leadership, perchance during the week, someone said something nasty to you. You're not the first. You are joining the likes of Aaron and Moses. You are not the last. Whosoever is in leadership, they will carry the burdens of the corporate. Whosoever takes a leadership role, they are signing up for being blamed. If you are leading your church and as we are going into the weekend, take note. The children of Israel have been known to complain. They have been known to accuse those who are in leadership. You may not be an exception. This may be your fate this weekend. Do not worry. It's not the last and you are not the last nor the first. 
The children of Israel go on. Now we're at point number three. They say, why would God bring us to die in this wilderness? Number one. Number two, why would he bring us here so that we will die by the sword? Number three, why would he bring us here so that our wives can remain widows, our children remain orphans? There comes a time when we, peop we people come together, we have suicidal thoughts. We are quick to think of death. We are quick to see death. And in seeing this death, we, we, we characterize ourselves by death. These are people who have been fed with manna. These are people who have crossed the Red Sea. These are people who have won against many nations that were powerful. But at a time when they should introspect and have their faith grow and become stronger, guess what? They define themselves and describe themselves in the context of death. You know, we have people who are like that as we go into the weekend. May you be a person who describes yourself with life, describe yourself with victory. Do not have a suicidal tendency where all you envision about your life is death. There is more than enough of death, especially these weeks. We are burying our loved ones every day, but we cannot have a problem of burying those who are alive because they are busy burying themselves and they want us to come to their funerals. Why are you burying yourselves when you are alive? Oh, child of God, you still have a future ahead of you. It is bright. You need not bury yourself. You still have a future ahead of you. It is looking so beautiful. Walk right into it. Do not, you know, take things that should not happen on account of your lack of faith and you want to make it a pragmatic statement. Yes, things are tough. You are in the wilderness. Yes, things are not easy. You have been on the road for so long. But stop behaving as if you're already dead. Point number four. Many a time when we talk about issues of death, it is so that we can veil our unbelief. Notice this. They say, what will happen to our wives? What will happen to our children? Didn't the Lord just bring us here so that our wives and children can be preyed upon? P-R-E-Y, pray, as, as in by animals. Now, if our wives and children are going to suffer this fate, what is the natural position? It is for us to question God. Many of us have sought a good reason to question God. We have sought a good reason not to have faith. We have sought a good reason so as to be a problem, a thorn in the flesh for the leadership. Why? Not because we are protecting our families. Many a time it is a lack of faith that we exemplify under the auspices of doing good. For the sake of our families, God must be sleeping on the well, on the way. For the sake of our families, our leaders must be leading us the wrong way. For the sake of our families, we want to appear like the good ones. We are the good ones who think about others, but we fail to appreciate that God is in control. And all this while, we have been walking at his heel. Point number five, as we come to a conclusion. Now, how do they even top it off? This is what they say. Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Oh, my dear friends, whatever could happen, whatever could be the case, never you dare find yourself heading back to Egypt. The life of yesterday should never be an option. The life of yesterday should never be an option. Egypt is out of bounds. Leave the life of bondage. Leave the life of sin once and for all. Even if the going gets tough, continue on the path that Jesus Christ sets. I remember the song. We'll continue going forward. We will not go back. That is a local song that we sing in Zimbabwe. I will not turn back. No, no turning back. The cross before me and the world behind. I will not turn back. Egypt should never be an option. Until we meet again on Monday, blessings and peace.